Hey there, Bipti here. Welcome to another short tutorial about Logic in Mindus 3 version 6. This time we're going to look at for loops. Once you know how they are done, you will have an easier time do, doing something with them. Let's do the following. Um, so what we want here is we want to do something over and over again um, a few times. So first of all, we need to have a loop counter. We're going to set it to zero. Then we want to have a maximum amount of iterations this loop is doing, for example 10. And then the actual loop starts. So in this case what we're going to do is we're going to print the loop counter. We will flash the loop counter to message one. We will need to link it. I haven't linked it yet. And then the essence of the for loop is the jump instruction, namely if the loop counter is smaller or equal to loop max, we want it to go back to the beginning of the loop, which is this one. So loop counter is zero, we want to go up to loop max, and then we're doing something every single loop. Here's an important thing which is missing. And it's very important because otherwise we would be stuck here forever. Namely, we want um, to increment the loop counter by one every single single time. This is not the set. We will need another one. We will need operation. And operations to, is basically, we can do math. <laughs> I want the loop counter to be loop counter plus one. Um, by the way, this needs to be different. Yeah, so we... No, no, this is okay. Okay, so we're setting loop counter to zero. We want it to go up to something else. Instead of using a variable here, we could be hard coding this, but I think it's more readable to, to, if you use a variable. We are printing it, we are flushing it, and then we are incrementing the loop counter. So instead of instead of zero, it is one now. And then we are looking, hey, is the loop counter smaller or equal to loop max? If we want it to go ten times, we need to make it smaller. If we want to make it go up to ten and then again, so effectively eleven times, we should be doing this be a smaller equal because if loop counter is 10 so it has it has it has been repeated 10 times times by now then it will not jump anymore and it will basically be done um, just to just to make a point let's make sure that it's it gets stuck somewhere right so like after this loop is finished, we want it to always jump back to another loop. Here we go. So we want it to print done. And we want to print it to message one. And we're always just printing one and staying here. So here's how it's going to go. We're start starting at zero. Then we are printing the zero, we are making the var variable go to one, and we look, hey, is one smaller than 10? Yeah, it is. So we go up again, we print the one, we increment it by one, so loop counter is two now, and then on it goes, like, is two smaller than 10? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, jump back. And then eventually it's at, is 10 smaller than 10? No, I don't think so, actually. So instead of jumping back, it goes forward, and then it will be stuck in this loop here, where we don't have a counter. We are just always getting stuck here and not getting out of it any anymore. All right, so that's it. <laughs> this up here is the for loop. This is something like a wild true loop, if you've been programming before. And it takes a while to get used to jump instructions, but once, once you know how they work, um, you will get used to it. So now that we go out, out of it, we will expect the message to go from 0 to 10 really quickly and then to print done, right? Ready? Here we go. Ah, we didn't link it, right? Okay. <laughs> Never mind, let's link it. 
and we will need to restart it because now it's done. So how can we restart it? I think this way is good. No? How do we restart something? Hmm. I'm not quite sure. So we can really quick, we can modify it to just jump to, to end right away. Let this sink in, so now it's kind of counting up over and over and over again, because every single time it, it gets to the end, the processor block starts over at the beginning. So if we want it to not stop ever, we will want it to be caught in this loop. Okay, now we have to be quick. Three, two, one. Oh, it's done already. So the processor is already counting um, when we are in the code. I didn't know this. This is interesting. Let's make something which counts up all the time and starts over. So what we'll see now is something going up to nine and um, never going to 10. And this is this is kind of a for loop. <laughs> this is what you can use to iterate over stuff or to, to do things multiple times. I hope this will help you. And you see, I made a few mistakes. It's quite confusing sometimes, but you know, when you take your time and you, when, when you think through it, when you try a few things, when you make mistakes, <laughs> you will learn. And I hope you'll have fun with this. All right, so much for now. See you in the next one. Bye.